Sorry, there's a power pop off. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Jacques Morelli, you're watching Entertainment on HuffPost Live. TV host, author, and mother Juliana Rancic is here to talk Fashion Week and so much more. Thanks for coming on. So good to see you. Dude, you're doing, you're, you're killing it. <laughs> Stop it, right? you're killing it. And I like your outfit. You look very fashionable today. I, I wish, I don't want you to stand up in case you're not prepared to, but his pants are super cool if you could see the design of his <laughs> Thank you. So, like, we're talking Fashion Week. Yeah. I wore all black. Is okay. this kind of the default... Uniform? Look at me, right? Who am I to talk? Um, you can never go wrong with it, right? But we are seeing a lot of uh, really interesting colors on the runway. You know, it's funny, there's this color combination uh, that people are buzzing about. Yellow and pink mixed together. Really? Uh, yeah, which is super interesting. It's a little like this man. It's a little like this man's shirt over here. Oh, yeah. You might want to pan over. You can see he oh, yeah. is actually wearing exactly that. Yes, he is rocking the uh, Fashion Week look. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the yellow pink is cool. You're seeing a lot of uh, velvet, velvet chokers, thick velvet chokers, uh, asymmetrical top, you know, with the strong shoulders back or in a dress version. Uh, so definitely a lot of really cool trends. Things that things that are throwbacks, like that top is a total throwback to the 80s. Um, so it's kind of fun to like dig into your 80s bin of clothes you never thought you would wear again. And you're like, score, I don't have to buy a new one for a lot of money. Uh, so it's cool to see like really new stuff that we've never seen before, uh, but also throwback stuff. So what's say the person that's coming here for the first time, their first New York Fashion Week, what's the number one tip you're giving to them, especially they're already on a couple guest lists, like how should they prepare? Ooh, good sunglasses. Gotta have good shades, you know, a lot of photographers all over town and so you want to always have like a cool pair of shades, especially because it's 91 degrees, very sunny here. Um, and, but you know, I think it's just like being cool about it, you know what I mean? And just really taking it in. I'm a big fan of that. You know, I never kind of forget, it's always exciting to me. Like I never want to get jaded, you know what I mean? Or feel like, oh, I'm so over this, I've done it so long. I, this is probably my 11th fashion week. And it's still, the energy still, if anything, honestly, if anything, I have more fun as the years go on. Um, you know, some people kind of lose interest the more they do something. But I gain interest, and I just think it's really fun. Who are you excited to see this week? Oh, my gosh. Well, um, I have a confession to make. I'm leaving early. <laughs> really? Well, you're a busy woman. You have restaurants, like, between Chicago and L.A., so I think it's understandable. So I am doing, I have something at my restaurant. Um, we just, op so we have two restaurants in Chicago, RPM Steak and RPM Italian. And we just opened RPM Italian in D.C., Washington, D.C. Congratulations. Thank you. So, you know, I love D.C. I'm, I'm actually from Bethesda, Maryland, which is right outside D.C. So it's very exciting to open a restaurant there. So um, I'm actually meeting Bill there and our son and my parents who live there uh, on Saturday in D.C. So, I'm, you know, I'm going to shoot fashion, please. Uh, cut the trip a little early because... Look, it's, you know, got to go to the restaurant because my family's there, too. I mean, I love the restaurant, but we're having a big dinner with the family. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to see my family. I love my son and my husband and my parents. And, you know, as great as this is, yeah. at the end of the day, um, you know, you always have to remember what really matters in life. And that's, of course, family. And for us, we've been through a lot, my husband and I, a lot of struggles, whether it was my health struggles, breast cancer, or infertility. We've been through a lot. So... I tell you, um, we appreciate family and, and good health a lot, you know, so we, we definitely never, we never lose sight of that. And our faith is very strong and, and we make sure we just never lose sight of what really matters in life. Talking about family, I said to you prior, yeah. I said you are the American dream. Coming here at seven years old and all these years, all these years later becoming so huge on E. Like, Talk to me about the importance of coming to this country, not speaking the language, yeah. and just still knocking it out of the park. You know, I got to tell you, I had one of the, you know, the best role models in the world, my dad. Um, he has an incredible work ethic. We're from Naples, Italy. My dad was taken out of school at 11 years old, the oldest of six kids, to work, you know. And uh, he worked in a tailor shop at a young age, you know, cleaning up the tailor shop. And he came to America to, to give us a better life opened up a tiny store, a bigger store, a bigger store, and he truly achieved the American dream. So to watch my dad 
achieve such a difficult dream uh, made me feel like I could achieve mine. And at a very young age, you know, I learned English watching television. So at a what shows? Age, the news. Real? Because you wanted to be a TV anchor woman. Always, always. So I would come home after school. And you know, after school, there's not a lot to watch. And so I don't want to age myself. We had four <laughs> channels back then, okay? You guys don't understand. No, but we did. And so I would come home and I would watch the five o'clock news. And, uh, and, and at a young age, I remember seeing this anchor woman, Barbara Harrison, who to this day, I finally met her a few years ago and I started crying. I was so emotional. Because as a little girl, I would watch Barbara every night and she basically taught me how to speak English, you know? And on the news, you know, they use shorter words and shorter sentences and they want to make it easy for everyone to understand. And so I, I really credit that for teaching me how to speak English. And that really started this dream of wanting to be an anchor woman and a TV host. So really between my dad's incredible guidance and watching him and his work ethic uh, and just, you know, being this girl with a dream, I was able to just work really, really hard and, and you know, achieve my goal. I think yeah. you've more than achieved it. Um, we have some comments here. Bill has a new book out from so Zana Ashworth. Yes. yes, his first novel. Yeah. Did you get to read it or talk to him about it while he was writing? Because you have three, so... Whoa, a little contest here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is really exciting. Bill uh, wrote a novel, and it's an amazing story. There are twists and turns. It's about a couple who take their son back to a place so that they can let him in on a huge secret. So it's very, very interesting. There are a lot of twists and turns, uh, and I love it. So I think it comes, it comes out in November, and you can actually pre-order it now. <laughs> I'm Bill's best salesperson, um, but yes, you could. I wish I knew the exact link, but you could. I, I've actually I posted it the other day, the link. But um, it's really, really good. You won't be disappointed. You'll love it. So we have another comment from Igwe Okpala. Ok says, "Hey Juliana, you're gorgeous." Thank you. You're so. It's all, it's all makeup, lashes. I'm not gonna lie, contouring, maybe a clip or two in my hair. Uh, no, uh, thank you very much. That's very sweet. So I want to go back to the restaurants. Like you're, you had an uncle that had a restaurant as well. Yeah. And what was it like going, growing up in the restaurant industry to now? Because like being a restaurant tour isn't easy. It is not easy. I'll tell you. So yeah, my, my uncle, he was actually the first. So my mom and dad are each one of six kids. So 12, you know, kids, big family. He was the first to come to America, and he opened up a restaurant, and he became successful in the late 70s, early 80s. He was the one who first encouraged my parents to move out here and said, hey, look what I did. You guys should do this, too. You know, you can make it here. And uh, so, yeah, I grew up in the restaurant business. Two of my uncles had restaurants. Actually, three of my uncles had restaurants. So I did. I was a coat check girl. I was a hostess. I was a server. I was a really good hostess, actually. <laughs> Everything else, not so good. Um, but it was awesome, and I think it did prepare me for the restaurant business. But I got to tell you. You know, I, I'm not one of these people who tries to take credit for everything. We have amazing, amazing partners. So we're partnered with Let Us Entertain You, and they have tons of restaurants. They're one of the biggest restaurant groups in the uh, country. And uh, it's the Melman family. They're amazing. And so that's really the secret. You know, they're amazing at what they do. And, you know, we, we could not have done this without them. So we have another comment in. Uh, Sandra Al Alana says, who designed your amazing outfit? Mine. We were just talking about this. Before. I know. So um, this little outfit, it's really cute. Should I stand up or yeah, no? Stand can up. I stand up? Let's stand up, yeah. So, um, oh, they can see your pants now. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of, we match, huh? A little bit. I think we look good. We do look good. It's, right? you know. Eh, eh. Um, so this is self-portrait. I'm a huge fan of self-portrait. Uh, people right now listening are like, who know self-portrait are like obsessed because it's such, I don't know, it's like every little outfit uh, from self portrait it just looks, it's just really cute. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it just has great details. So thank you very much. We have another comment here. Do you want um, to from, sit down or no, we can see stay in there. I like okay. it. From Marine Femme, it says, I miss your TV show. Thank you very much. You know, we did uh, the reality show, Julianne yeah. and Bill, for many seasons. I, I think we did 80 episodes. And it was incredible, amazing, so much fun to do. You know, I, I hope we helped a lot of people along the way you know whether it was trying to have people trying to have a baby people going through a, a tough time in their lives um, and, and so it was a very rewarding experience but at the same time 
we needed to pull back a little bit just because our son is four and he was getting to an age where I don't know about the storylines, you know what I mean? I don't know if I would have wanted to show cameras at his preschool or him going through certain milestones, you know what I mean? So I, I just, uh, you know, some things have to be private. And look, Bill and I are very open and we share a lot, but it's our son, you know? And so until he has a say, we want to just protect him. What goes into the decision to undertake being on a reality show? And I know you were just saying that your son is at utmost importance. Like, yeah. is Duke really the reason why you were like, you know what, let's just come back, just take it back? Yeah, you know, we, when it's the two of us, you know, we're adults, we can yeah. make decisions for ourselves. And we came together as a couple and decided to keep doing season after season. Um, and then when we discussed the idea of continuing it, and talked about what would the next year look like. And we thought about the different milestones that Duke would be reaching, the th different things he'd be going through. I honestly, we kind of checked it up. Like, I wouldn't want to show that. I wouldn't want to show that. I wouldn't. And so it just, I don't also, I, I don't want to disappoint the viewer. I don't want people yeah. to tune in and go, gosh, these two are doing, they just sit at dinner and talk for an hour. This is the most boring show on television. So we just wanted to kind of pull back. And who knows, as Duke gets older, or maybe Bill and I will do something a little different. So we're playing around with some ideas. We'll see. Oh, uh, Sandra says, absolutely love it. Thanks so much for replying. Thanks, um, you're also auctioning off uh, a, yeah. a beetle. Let's yeah. talk about that a bit. Oh, my God. I'm so glad. A pink beetle. A pink beetle. It's for charity. Yes. Yeah. So I started an initiative um, after my double mastectomy about four years ago. I can't believe how time has passed. Um, and it's called Fabuish. And so we grant wishes for women who are going through breast cancer treatment. And uh, I teamed up recently with a wonderful organization called Pink Agenda here in New York City. And so we're having a gala next month. And in the meantime, we're auctioning off on Charity Buzz. If you just search Rancic or Juliana or, uh, or Beetle, uh, we're uh, auctioning off the coolest pink beetle it's actually the first car to ever be named a hashtag. Really? The hashtag Pink Beetle is its actual technical name. Yeah. Um, so Volkswagen, thank you so much. I think the bidding's up to about $25,000 and it just started the other day. Congratulations. So, so of course the money is gonna go to, to research mm -hmm. as well as granting wishes for very, very deserving women. Just make them feel like a princess for a day. Thank you yeah. so much, Juliana. I can talk to you. <laughs> You're the Thank American you. gene. Seriously. Seriously. You are. Are you kidding me? Okay, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Same to you. Are we still on? Okay. Oh, yeah, we're still on. Uh, you're watching Entertainment on HuffPost Live. I'm Jacques Morel. Later. Bye, guys. <laughs> that was awesome.